Hello, everyone, and welcome to the front nine coverage of round two of the 2021 MVP Open at Maple Hill. Presented by MVP Disc Sports, Brian Earhart here with Nate Perkins again. This tournament has already provided a handful of highlights, and it's been such an awesome week so far. That drone flyover really does it justice. Ma oh, yeah. Maple Hill is... There's nothing else like it. It's such a beautiful piece of land, and there's so many little pockets of beauty, you know, little bodies of water, little pockets those, of short little trees, tall, beautiful pines. Yeah, those ponds with the bloom, yeah. blooming lily pads and full of bullfrogs and brown water snakes. This place is full of life, and we have had perfect conditions. Starting yesterday on Friday, pretty breezy. Calm down for this second round here. Hole one was takes 450 to cross this pond here. Yesterday it was tough. Today wasn't playing quite as stiff. Yeah, distance is still key here. You see how tight this mouth is, and anything outside of those walls is out of bounds once you cross the stone wall. Yeah, it's a it's a tough opening birdie, but it's awesome for the fans to watch them completely air out the shot. Gainesville, Florida, Double G, Garrett Gerthy. And look, look at this card. Garrett Gerthy, Matt Oram, Paul Uliberry, Ben Calloway, all people who've been playing disc golf for a very, very long time and can all crush in the woods. Garrett's the player that when you hear that he's about to tee off on one, that people, people move their bodies to come watch oh yeah yeah and, and he put that decent ways turned it a little bit too much but oh, we get matty o again back to back rounds yeah, we've we been get to seeing see him, him just spin the disc oh yeah i i just i love how much like old school touch he has mixed with he still has the modern power absolutely that shot we saw him throw yesterday on hole yeah. 12 down through the gap and just Watch this man's footwork. He's the Bubba Watson of, of disc golf. Absolutely. The He's Bubba a natural. Watson. I love that, Brian. He's a natural, and he makes the disc move in ways that other players can't. And just near perfect line. But he's going to be still in a fantastic spot. Looking down the gap for a birdie look. Okay, and I'm going to say it right now. When it comes to gap hitting with power, he's like near the top of my list. I love these steep hyzer flips that he loves trying to throw at full power down he's tight throwing, tunnels. He's throwing the nuke, right, for his yeah. max distance. Oh, yeah. And he got it to turn, even with the height. And he's going to be off on that left side. So, again, it's kind of like a, a dice roll, whether or not you have a good lie. So we were speaking yesterday about Matty O's player value skyrocketing this year. This is another athlete's name that comes up in that conversation. Ben Calloway has really gotten comfortable out here on the road mm -hmm. this year, wouldn't you say, Brian? Oh, and I've been saying it for a long time. I mean, I've been playing against Ben in the Midwest for years, and he is easily one of the most athletic disc golfers I've ever played with, and he cares so deeply about training, and it's so nice to see him on this stage getting what he's worked so hard for. And you can see here, if you're off on the right side and you're not past the trees, it's pretty much a layup every time. It's just so pinched. Oh, he's going for it, Brian. And he has gone out of bounds. That was a risky play. Did it go OB or did it kick in? I saw the out of bounds okay. marker. Yeah, he was pretty far away to go for it. Yeah. 
I feel like every player has their own distance, like that rule where they're like, ah, even though it looks tempting, I'm not going for it. And looks like they just crossed into Yuli's range. Ben is just going to toss a roach into the gap. Okay. Fourth hardest hole in the course. 4.31 average, even with the calmer conditions. And Paul's now putting for a par from here. Oh, he thought he had that. What a floater. Great looking putt from 90 feet. Giving it a bit of a run. The fans are starting to roll in. Thousand spectator passes sold for the event. On such a small, compact venue, it's really awesome to have this many people coming out to support. Hole number two. Just such a variety of, of ways to play the hole. Yeah, you've got OB all along the length of the hole on that right side. It kind of plays slightly uphill, but there's a little crest that goes downhill, over a little creek, and then back up. We've seen the roller quite a bit, but you are testing mm -hmm. that little ditch right there at 65 feet. Yeah, pe people are loving it. There's so many players laying this roller down. Garrett doing the same thing. Gets the hop. Oh, and it still tried to cross the bridge. Yeah, he just tested those trees a little too much. It looks like Matt's doing the same thing. I, I could also see Yuli doing it. I believe this is an X3 that he's been throwing. Kind of a thinner profile driver. There it is. He got the hop. Oh, this is such a great look, and it just rolled right over that ditch. Roll time, baby. <laughs> Give him the roll tide. That Let's was for go, saving. Oh, Matty O. And Ben is just going with an onyx here. He's just going to go. Is he going air shot? Yeah, he's going okay. a little Annie out of the hand. This is a comfortable shape for Ben. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he just sawed that off a little bit. Wow. wow. What looked like a sawed off drive actually yeah. faded out nicely for him. He's going to be about 55 short. But yeah. It just came out of his hand so early. Yeah. But good angle. Yeah. It's almost like he didn't get enough spin on it because he sawed it off. But because of that, it flipped <laughs> and it like went back to the spot that he wanted. Oh, no. Paul needs that to come out. No. That <laughs> is so unfortunate. Just the last tree. It could have kicked down, it could have kicked left. And given... Is, that's not his Sonic, right? That's the AVR... AVR X3, X3, I believe. X3, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. We talk about great push putts. That is textbook. Please, Gatekeeper, rewind that one. Little nose up, pushes it. Little bit of ante, but just enough to where it flattens out as it's flying towards the basket. Great putt for birdie there for Ben. Oh, yeah. Paul's putt has been very clean this year. And can you actually talk about his coach a little bit for us, Brian? Yes. Yeah, so Mike? He, yeah, he he is working with a, a man named Mike Strauss. Um, he's from the Chicagoland area. I don't know fully what their, you know, relationship is, but I know that um, I know Mike personally, and he is a biomechanics form mad scientist is the best way to describe him, and, and he's had a lot of deep talks with Paul this season about putting. and. Paul said that he actually changed his putting stroke completely yeah that little the his setup that he does where he has the putter kind of like down below mm -hmm. his waist a little bit 
At Upper Park Disc Golf, we're in business to make the game better for everyone. We do that by helping our player team grow their brands, by donating to great charities like You Play Disc Golf, by maintaining a 98% customer satisfaction rate, and by living our core values. Play different, create legendary relationships, be a good human, and enjoy the ride. So when you buy from Upper Park Disc Golf, you know you're buying from a company that loves the game as much as you do. Upper Park Disc Golf. Play different. Oh three, three, 412 feet. You're actually teeing off from OB, so if you hit really early, you can get dangerous quick. And this has to be one of the most spe specific birdies on the course, Brian. I mean, there's, there's kind of two ways to do it. You can throw flippy and at the wall trees and let it drift, or you can force over something stable. Yeah, I personally think the first option is easier. It's a little straighter of a line. But Matt's going to show you that long flex shot. It's still not an overstable disc that he's thrown, but it has enough teeth on it yeah, to be absolutely perfect. This is going to be a great form check example. Let us show you here. Look how high he gets the disc up, but he's throwing Annie, so he wants to keep it out off of his body, elbow off the side, and then, yeah, it's just, <laughs> he just snaps his wrist. It's... There's other players build up more momentum with their lower body than Matty O. Yeah. But Matty O still just spins it as far. It's, yeah, it's, ch it's it changing. It breaks the physics for, of everything I've try been trying to learn. You <laughs> I know, know yeah. It's like, you can't teach what he's doing. No, you can't question you know, someone that's been playing the game for you know, decades. This is way more textbook from Ben, but he just couldn't get it far enough. That's to the, the tree right that stops that line. Mm -hmm. He was throwing the more drifty shot, something a little bit more understable, a little bit more direct. And that left side is not fun to get through. It looks like a mid range, Brian. It definitely has some meat on its bones, though. It checked up, and he's also going to be inside circle one. I think he just threw a rock three. Ew. 412 feet. Like you said, specific is is the word. You it's know, hard to get lucky on this hole. Sometimes exactly. you'll see some shots filter through that back wall, but it is a very tight line. Right out of your hand, you know if you're gonna put it inside circle one. Okay, Ben making up for the kickoff left that he's going to tap in a par. Here's double G from about 25 for his first birdie. Wait, what a shot. Just nearly dead flat mid-range. Just barely drifting. It looks stable like a stable mid-range, yeah. I mean, to throw it 412 feet of power and then to still have a check up at the end, like... That's a very specific shape. And then Matt tapping in a flawless birdie. That's as good as we've seen it thrown on camera. Yeah, he controlled the stability with the height. He threw it high enough to where, even though it was starting to flip right, it was nose up enough to where it still stabilized. That's why this is one of my favorite holes in the course to watch someone absolutely pure. Hole number four, just jumping back two decades, <laughs> Get, giving you a flippy, floaty putter down the gap. If you want to jump putt it, you still have to earn the landing. So many trees in the way. We're seeing some other alternative routes get taken. I know Paul McBeth has thrown Thumber on this in the past. Really? Yes. One of the only Thumbers he ever throws is, is on this hole. Not sure what he's doing this year yet. Uh 
Oh boy. And I wonder, I really wonder if, if he tried the Sonic on that tee shot. I feel like that might, that, I mean, he knows his bag better than me. I'd just kind of love to see him try it. I would love to watch that as yeah. well. And Ben going with a flippy roach, and he also can't hit the gap. It's such a touchy hole. Oh, yeah. It's the biggest curveball. All these huge lines you have to throw out here. And this one, you just barely have to kiss it, but you have to hit the gap. Mm -hmm. Paul just going ringer. And he just wants to give himself a putt. He does not care about parking the hole. These are tough approaches. That back wall comes quick. Ooh, floating. All the way down the hill. I thought that was maybe going to go long, but it slowed down so quickly. Yeah, Garrett's the type of player that when he... Oh, that one almost did go in. When he develops the touch with the disc, he will continue to throw that disc on all kinds of lines just because he feels comfortable with the grip and the disc stability. Yeah, he has he has a very, it seems like a limited selection. Like, like you said, he has his bread and butter discs that he'll reach for over and over and over again. And Paul's focused. You could tell he's starting to notice all these little intricacies about the wind. And he's just looking for something. He's still one over through four holes. Yeah, one over through four. And he nearly got it in, got it on the green on one. Barely kicked OB on two. Mm -hmm. Almost made his putt on three. He's hanging by a thread right now. Second easiest hole in the course, moving into the easiest. Excellence to me is about constant self-analysis. Which habits are helping me towards my goals and which ones aren't? It's the same with nutrition. The foods I eat should help make my mind and my body the best they can be. Thunderbird makes that simple. Here we are, easiest hole in the course, still not a walk in the park. Water carry right away, tricky wind coming off of the water, and then you have this tight sliver of a green. If you don't have a chip forehand, the backhand turnover is is a tough shot. But I am thinking our whole card is going for it with the flick. Woo. 25 feet. Okay, so I was thinking De uh, Garrett was going to go with the Firebird, but he is opting for the backhand turnover. Gary. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. What a shot. Perfect. Let's, let's go to Garrett's form. Another player that when it comes to slowing down, he's really good at keeping his timing clean. He can up tempo on a driver 700 feet, he can down tempo on a Sonic and throw it 150 feet with a full approach. It's tough to do that. And Garrett just seems to be so much more about his body weight and his lower body than, than Matty O. You know, Matty O is all up here in the wrist and the upper body and producing that spin. And Garrett, his footwork Garrett's is arm, so good. And Garrett's just using that weight and his arm is just a, a part of the process, you know? Give us that tree love donation. Ben Calloway skipping a raptor off the tree and kicking right back to the basket. That's a park job for Birdie. And I'm guessing Yuli's going raptor as well. Give us another one. Give us another donation. Let's keep planting trees here, folks. Nice little bounce off the tree as well for Yuli. Tight spirals coming your way from Matty O. <laughs> yes. 
He's stoked. I mean, he's, he's three stoked. down through five. That's a great pace to be at right now, especially moving into six and seven, and I guess now eight. He knew it right away. Yeah, saw that right out of his Didn't hand. Didn't get the legs involved in that straddle. Ooh, there's our diver. <laughs> the crew at Maple Hill is fantastic. They always have people going in the water looking for discs and... You usually get everything that you lose yeah, back. You really do. We've actually got floating assets out there in the pond now. That's great. This sport you is gotta just love it. growing and growing with every round. Yeah, shout out to the subway. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Hole six has to be one of the hardest holes on the course. Where are we at, Brian? What's number one. Number one. That makes sense. You've got OB right. You've got OB left. It's so hard to get onto the green. This last group of trees here, you pick the fairway. You can either go left, go for the longer putt, go right, test the wall. Such a memorable birdie if you find yourself on the green on six. Oh, he's throwing the disc so well right now. And he pures the left gap. Couldn't quite hear, but I think he said one of the Alabama football player <laughs> players right there. Maybe the quarterback. He's tuned right in. Right after he threw it. Garrett going with the rock, and that is going to kick him out of bounds. That happens so easily on this hole. And that's why it is the hardest hole in the course because it's almost an instant double bogey being OB that early yeah. right. And even the ceiling is kind of low. Ben Ben is still going with a Luna. He's going putter. He's going to throw this hard. Look at this shot. Just oh, chipping his disc. It really moved his disc. Yeah. What a shot. Fantastic drive from Ben. Never left the line he released it on. Never moved. Oh, and he pulls the sidearm off. It's got to miss that middle section of trees, and it does. Let's jump to Yuli's forehand here. He is self-proclaimed best forehand inside 280 feet. And I I love his sidearm. It's so compact. He doesn't He doesn't go for anything fancy. He's not throwing giant distant shots, but when it comes to a technical scramble sidearm, he's so solid. He was so dialed into that putt. So focused. Yeah, you, you saw it. Yeah, He's... I could see it in his face. He just, the way he collects himself. I mean, every time he's stepping up to putt, it's it's an opportunity for him. Yeah. You know, he, he's not worried about whether he can make it or not. Oh, and you saw a little bit of a drop out of the sky from, from Ben's putt there. Thought the line was really good. But just a beautiful drive. Yeah. You gotta love getting a two on this hole. Especially for his first birdie of the round. 3.58 average on the par three. Yeah, and the first birdie of the round. Oh boy, <laughs> I left. Yeah, that was for his double. And it happens so quickly. That's a mean hole. A couple of pars, a birdie, and a double. The spread on this hole is really good. I, I, I think this is one of my favorite holes in disc golf. 
I love how tight the gap is. I still remember the first R Pro Dart I ever got. I took it to the course and immediately I knew that it was a disc that was gonna make my bag. It's just a disc that feels like it was made for my hands. It feels all I have to do is think about what I want it to do and it just does it. And that's why I usually carry at least two or three of them in all the tournaments I play. Hole number seven, uphill, punch hyzer flip to flat. And you gotta move a little bit left, actually, if you wanna pure the gap. Um, it is it is not an easy hole to be inside circle one. And another one that you can just bogey instantly yeah. if you hit one of the early trees. What I think is interesting about this course is you have this stretch four through seven. Okay, Paul hits this with pretty good hyzer. Yeah, circle two. Like I was saying, you have this stretch of four through seven, four and five, first and second easiest holes in the course, and then right after six and seven, first and second hardest holes in the course. It is a, it's an emotional roller coaster. this stretch of the course. It's a tough spot over there, early right. Early left is worse. So it's not the worst kick for Matty O. He's speeding it up for this one. Yeah, this is an Onyx. This is like a glidey 10 speed driver. This one has a little bit of turn on it. Oh, come on. And he's gone pin high. He's gonna have a long look for birdie, but. You don't see a lot of shots end up that far left. No, because he actually nailed the yeah, gap. Yeah, he peered it. He's throwing some pure lines. And you were mentioning how he likes that, like the shot he threw on hole two, kind of ante, flex out of the hand. The thing I really like about Ben is he actually can do anything. He throws the hyzer flip, he throws the flat shots, he throws the flexes. Garrett's drive sneaks a little bit right. We'll see how far away he is from there. Oh, I thought that was gonna be parked. A little bit deep, but he's still gonna be putting for a three. What a shot. Yeah, it's a fantastic scramble from where he was at. Hitting right is terrible. Oh, he had such good pace, had the height. There we go, look at this, down below the waist. Whoa! He what dropped it a in! Putt. Just look Give at the way the he gets his legs involved. Look, the legs are right before the disc. That he's, is huge. He's one of the top circle one putters this season, and at one point he was number one. He was like 92% C1X, and now he's starting to really bang circle two putts, and I know he had mentioned in the past there was kind of a dead zone in circle two that he was really struggling from, but we're seeing a, a new side. Yeah, Ben doesn't want to challenge the drop off from 70 feet from a knee, understandably. Tough footing over there, couldn't do his normal stance. And Paul is starting to heat up a bit. Six and seven. That'll Amazing recharge your round stretch right of birdies. And now we move into number eight, which is kind of adding to this stretch of six and seven. Not an easy hole. It's now 365 feet. 
Nothing is in bounds except for the tee pad and the island green. And the wind, if it's blowing in the wrong direction, it makes the hole really challenging. Yeah, 365 and it's a 350 water carry. Yeah. Normally for a 365 foot shot, you're getting some ground play to get out there. You have to carry this the entire way. Oh yeah, Is Paul's, Paul's also going onyx? You know, on this one, I I don't know what this swirly disc is that he's got. Looks like he's trying to flip it. That might be... Oh! And he gets the green! What a ride. Got it to flip a tiny bit. I, I know he was trying to get it a little higher. But he's right there putting. Again, 6, 7, and 8 would be a phenomenal turkey to get on this course. He's not throwing the passion, is he? Mmm. It kind of flipped up it's, a little it's bit. It's so new that I, yeah. I really don't know yet. It's something that I'm personally bagging and loving. Yes. And Ben is throwing a mid-range. No. That's a buzz. That's a buzz? Yeah. No. What? Come on. What a shot. And here's that. Same disc from Garrett. Oh, that is drifting hard. Needs help. Needs help. Oh, and he makes it back in bounds. I did not think that was coming back. Well, this is so exciting. And this crowd right here, they're formerly known as the eight holes. You can hear them from any hole on the front nine. It's one of the best seats in the house. They have bleachers set up there now, and you have to have a VIP pass to make it back there. But I think that's kind of a special part about this course. Yeah, so right before the card shows up, they actually oh, inform, man. they they call out everybody's name yeah. that's about to tee. And then as the players are walking up to the tee pad, they start a slow clap <laughs> for every card Love that. all day long. So we have all four players making the island. Garrett is farthest away from about 28. What a feeling. Paul's feeling that wind. Kind of a tough lie. So he's stretching the max distance for this putt that he has, this long spinner. His is more of a floaty spin putt. He didn't like that. Looked a little uncomfortable. Yeah, he did. I don't know what it was. He reset off the straddle, kind of shook his head a little bit. Yeah, he, he doesn't have that like Emerson Keith, like wrist rocket spin putt. He has like a, he tries to drop the disc in the basket still. He tries to control his tempo. So he, he doesn't fire his putts. So I, I think there might be some positions that are just a little bit more uncomfortable. And Ben just softly landing a buzz. Matty O goes kneel the ball. <laughs> taps it in from a knee. And the player value just continues to skyrocket for Matt Orm. Hole number nine, weirdly shaped par four, but really fun. Really, really fun shot to throw. Yeah, you can't really tell on this drone flyover right here, but it is really steep off the tee. Yeah. You can't see the landing zone. You're heading up the hill, back down to the right. Great shots land right about here. Then you have to make that decision. Do you want to jump putt onto this island? Do you want to toss something on and play for a longer putt? But as you can see, look how close that elevated mm -hmm. pin is to the water. I've heard a lot of stories of people throwing flippy nine speeds from numerous companies getting to the green. But Ben is just throwing a putter here, just trying to give himself a look at the green. It gets really risky if you do go with the, the driver, but I think I think Yuli does go. I think he goes nuke on this hole. Depends on if he has the right one in his bag. 
that's the literal last thing you want to do. That's that's going to be a pitch out to even a, a tough zone to get up and down from there. Look at this. Yeah, like, it, I know we've said it just over and over again, but his release is like no one else. Yes. It's so far in front of I his I could watch body. it all day. I would play catch with that man. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going flippy. Maybe. Oh, oh no. no. It was flying. But such okay. is... There's the mindset. Okay. Slow down. So he's going to think that that is actually where it just landed. Wow. Right? I mean, Cause he's at the bottom of the hill you now. You can't see that. Yeah. So that was flying, though. I mean, if that misses that tree, it's going to continue to to drift down the hill. He's the only person I know of that I've watched hit the green. Hit and, the green. Yeah, and it, and it was with a just annihilated 10-year-old nuke that... Looked like it had been run over by a, a steamroller. Um, but he I've seen him land on the green with that shot, so. But it's such a cool line to watch. Oh my goodness. Get up. Ben's gonna have a putt for par across the water. Whoa. I'm not entirely sure what just happened. I think we, Matty, Matty O threw and. Out of turn. The, yeah, or maybe, we, yeah, out of turn. Or we just didn't, we didn't know quite who was up. And I see. Oops. That was weird, but <laughs> that's unfortunate. He went out of bounds after a clean tee shot. Not a not an amazing approach from Paul, but he was running a long jump putt. He's still 25 death putt, you know, death putt from the basket. And this is for par for Ben. And he knows that the, that is just a silly mistake on this hole. This one averaged right at par. Yeah. Give him the par. <laughs> and the shades, the, the shenanigans with his shades, like never staying on his face. Like it's almost like he's a like a cartoon character he when he's is, walking through the course. He is a cartoon character, a great one. Saturday Yeah, morning, one of my favorite. Getting my bowl of cereal, <laughs> throwing on Matteo, and just cracking up. And like I had mentioned, that yeah, that approach from Paul put him in kind of an uncomfortable spot. That's a pretty rough death putt being four feet from the water, and he missed low. That's the, you know, the... The challenge of this whole, obviously, the uphill tee shot with the awkward, you know, late turnover, but then this tight green. Yeah. You have to, you have to, there's that risk reward. Do you want to put it close? Do you want to put it far away and trust your putt? And again, the front nine did not disappoint. No. I mean, this is one of my, my favorite front nines in all of disc golf. And as Matt takes the stick to get his out-of-bounds disc, that is going to wrap up the front nine for us, folks. Not too bad from Ben and Matt. Yuli at one down, double G at even. Just showing you how good the scoring spread is on this course. But you see here, Eagle McMahon on top. Oh, we see a familiar face, Nate Perkins on the leaderboard. Shooting some solid golf as well, my friend. Look at this drone view. Look, that's that's actually where we're playing, yeah, guys. Yeah, that's the Christmas tree farm with ponds and the sap house. You've got 
board games up there. You've, I mean, people are playing pool. There's a ping pong room yeah. in a barn where they're having a, <laughs> they're having a ping pong tournament right now as we commentate. Yeah, it's a little bit of a disc golf oasis here, and uh, we're gonna catch you for the back nine again. Make sure to subscribe to Gatekeeper Media. We will see you again on the back.